Hello everyone, Berserk here, and uh, welcome to uh, this series in which I'm going to be playing a mod for Total War Tela called Age of Vikings, uh, which came out fairly recently, although I hadn't had a chance to play it. Uh, this is my first time playing it, I have no experience with this mod, I just downloaded it, downloaded a few extra mods as well, uh, which uh, the creator of the mod actually claimed that they... Uh, uh, enhance the experience so we're gonna see if that's any if that's true and we're gonna see if the mod is any good but um anyways what this mod is is basically uh takes a charlemagne dlc and takes it further into the viking age after the death of death of ragnar lothbrok and uh, as you can see you have um you know all those kingdoms that i'm gonna go through and uh you know give you a little bit of information about each of them but i am personally gonna be playing as the kingdom of dublin but yeah, anyways, what's going on like politically, like the whole situation? So we have, first of all, we have the Dane Law ruled by Havdan Ragnarsson, who is one of uh, Ragnar's uh, sons. You know, he belongs to the Ragnarsson dynasty. Uh, he was a commander of the Great Heathen Army and he was the ruler of Jorvik, which was the kingdom established, you know, after, you know, the raiding and pillaging of England. You know, the Vikings eventually settled down and formed the kingdom, which was very short-lived, but, you know, still... Uh, it existed and it was apparently ruled by uh, Havdan Ragnarsson. So uh, then we have the Danes uh, ruled by this guy who uh, who was uh, the king of the Danes at the time, and uh, he was also uh, a commander in the Great Heathen Army. To be honest, I don't know too much about him, but this is pretty much the Danes. They have pretty much the same faction traits, and they're ruled by this guy who looks cool as well. Uh, so the faction that I'm going to be playing as is the Kingdom of Dublin. Uh, who was another Viking kingdom established uh, in Ireland, obviously, um, by Norwegian settlers. And it was, uh, again, a short-lived kingdom. It didn't last for too long, and the Vikings eventually assimilated uh, with the Irish, uh, you know, culture and population. But uh, it existed for longer than Jorvik, actually. Um, but yeah, this is Olaf. He is of a different dynasty. He's not related to Ragnar. Um... But yeah, it's actually interesting because historically Dublin was actually found by the Vikings. It was originally a Viking settlement. And um, it's also interesting that, you know, modern DNA uh, studies and stuff like that uh, actually reveal that a lot of Dubliners uh, have a significant amount of um, Scandinavian DNA uh, as a result of the, you know, of the Viking settlers. There is uh, also, you know, a lot of obvious, um, you know, Irish cultural traits that were influenced by uh you know scandinavian customs and stuff like that uh since you know they uh, eventually had a contact and there were quite a few scandinavians that settled in the region you have the emirate of sicily which is a uh, muslim faction um uh based in you know in uh, sicily southern italy i don't know too much about it to be honest but you know they're the muslim faction uh in this campaign and uh, apparently they, they have a very difficult campaign, but you know, it'll be cool if you want to play as a Muslim faction, you can convert the whole of Italy. Um, and yeah, then we have uh, the Kingdom of Wessex, which is the playable Anglo-Saxon kingdom in this campaign. Um, so yeah, apparently they have a very difficult campaign as they're going to have to fight the Vikings. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, historically the Kingdom of Wessex was one of the, you know, bigger... Um, English kingdoms during the Viking Age. Uh, then we have the Kingdom of Asturias ruled by King Alfonso II, uh, who was known for sort of starting the Reconquista. He was, uh, you know, if you... I, I don't know too much about, you know, Spanish history and the Reconquista in general, but this guy is given a lot of credit for it. Uh, he had uh, bonds with the Carolingian rulers, uh, the descendants of Char Charlemagne, and he was able to conquer a bunch of territory from the Muslims, basically. Then we have the Kingdom of Brittany, and to be honest, I didn't even know that it existed during the Viking Age, so I cannot give you any information about it, but, you know, if you want to download them all, there is a bunch that you can uh, read about it. And then we have the three Carolingian rulers. Uh, this is Charles the Bold, which uh, who is probably the most famous out of them, uh, simply because he was the one defending Paris uh, from the Vikings. Uh, you know, one of their attempts to sack the city was successful, and uh, the other one was not. Uh, but yeah, this guy ruled West Francia, he's a descendant of Charlemagne, as are those two. Uh, so as you know, after Charlemagne, 
uh, established the Frankish Empire, it sort of fell apart into um, three kingdoms which were West Francia, East Francia, and uh, the Kingdom of Lombardy, or Italy in this case. But yeah, let us begin. Uh, so the faction traits that we have is religious tolerance, we have minus 50% public order penalty from religious unrest, which is cool, however we're still pagan, we're not Christian, so we're gonna try to convert it, um, convert the whole thing to paganism. Uh, then we have uh, integration, double unit replenishment when taking on defeated troops post battle, which is uh, gonna be very cool as I usually do that after a battle. Um, although there are gonna be some, um, um, probably some integrity penalties and stuff like that, but still it's cool. Uh, colonization, we have constant immigration from North settlers, and then we have cultural tolerance. No public order penalties from immigration in own provinces. So we have constant immigration, but we have no public order um, penalties due to it, which is an interesting mechanic. So yeah, let us begin and uh, see how it's gonna work out. Again, I haven't played this mod, I don't know what to expect, um, so yeah, we'll see how it's gonna go. I know there are a bunch of new units and stuff like that, so it should be cool. Alright, War Weariness, uh, I'm familiar with this mechanic, uh, it's a thing for Charlemagne. So. Uh, here's our ruler, uh, Olaf, who is, uh, 34 years old. He's got a son called Harold, so we have an heir. Wouldn't be too bad if he becomes the governor of Munster, which is our province here. Uh, Dublin is not actually the provincial capital, but this is, so we're gonna have to go to war with those guys eventually. Um, okay, so let's, uh, see here what we can do. Apparently there are new, um... Edicts as well, which is nice to see. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in here. So, let's see. I, I would like to convert this to paganism. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, edict that actually promotes paganism. And, uh, is there one that does that, though? I am not, I'm not sure about that. Well, apparently there isn't. But, uh, we can do growth, which would be pretty nice. We can do food production as well. However... Uh, sanitation wouldn't be bad. However, I'm gonna pick growth and construction costs because we're gonna be building uh, a lot of stuff here and we're gonna need growth because I wanna, you know, expand the settlement as much as possible. This is gonna be our capital, at least in the beginning of the campaign. So, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Let's see what I'm gonna research. Uh, I don't really see too much of a difference in the, uh, when it comes to the text, but. I might be wrong about that. But let's see here. Hall of Stories or Warrior's Hall. Well, we're going to be fighting a lot of factions, so let's go the military route. Although we have almost no money whatsoever, so that's going to be tough. Um, here, I want to convert that to, actually, the, to someone that actually provides me with money. Uh, squalor. Uh, well, we're going to have a little bit of squalor, but we're going to have to do it. We're going to need some more money. Uh, you know, having long ships would be nice. Although that actually provides us with uh, long ships as well. So I'm definitely going to convert that. And uh, here I'm going to build some sort of a shrine that gives me, um, you know, that gives me, uh, that makes paganism grow basically. It's not that, there you go. Sacred ground. That's the one that I need. So I'm pretty much going to spend all my money on turn one. Can actually build something else and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a sanitation building. Although I really need something that's going to provide me with money. So building this, like a winemaker, uh, wouldn't be too bad either. Yeah, because it just gives me money. Not too much money, but it gives me money in uh, growth. Which is, well, I'm not actually going to need growth. So I might want to consider changing that edict. Because I'm going to have no more uh, construction sites for the city, but I mean, I'm going to keep conquering. I'm going to conquer those settlements too. So yeah. Okay. Let's build that. Let's uh, get some more extra growth and I'm not actually going to change the edict. Would be nice having a spy, uh, but I cannot recruit one at the moment and my army is not too big. Um, so I might want to recruit some more, uh, you know, so we, I guess those units are unique for our uh, faction. We have those Norse goal swordsmen and uh, horsemen, apparently. So, yeah, um, we're going to see how the units, uh, 
how the units are gonna be if they're gonna be any good uh, but yeah we do have cavalry although uh, yeah and i assume that the dean law over there don't really have any but yeah let's see how we are when it comes to the other factions whether they like us or not yeah the dean law they do like us and everyone else pretty much hates us all the english and the irish kingdoms and the scottish ones they all you know dislike us but yeah we're gonna start uh by conquering those guys as they hold the rest of our province and i really want this provincial capital and the settlement over there so we're gonna recruit some troops uh we pretty much built everything that we needed so i can spend this money so even if i go below my uh income that's not gonna be too horrible um let's see what i what i want um i'm gonna build like a couple more levy freemen and a couple more axe freemen I'm gonna recruit units for like a couple of turns um so i don't know if i need any archers or anything like that they're probably not very good yeah very poor missile block chance armor piercing damage and very poor armor as well so yeah i'm gonna build some cavalry instead and that's gonna be pretty much it and then i'm gonna have to go and siege the provincial capital and just hope that those guys don't have like an enormous army because that would that would suck what was that edict issued all right so now we have growth so we're gonna be able to expand those settlements when we conquer them can end another turn there is not really much that i can do and uh there's famine as well wow what did that there isn't like anything that uh we didn't have an edict that gave us food or anything like that is it the uh huh i'm not sure where that came from i didn't upgrade this oh yeah we had a building that actually provided us with uh, 20 food and it doesn't anymore so yeah that was i didn't think that through but i guess we can convert it back and it's just gonna be a bunch of money wasted but yeah there's not really much that i can do about it although it's not really going to be that big of a deal as uh, I'm going to start marching towards, uh, you know, those guys. But yeah, I, I yeah, I, I'm going to need to convert that building eventually. That was that was a big mistake. Now I have uh, no foot at all and I, there's not really much that I can build. So yeah, uh, I'm going to have to convert that back. So yeah, I wasted a bunch of money. Um, let's get that. Uh, we need public order. Uh, so for the next six turns, we're going to be researching that as public order here is very bad and squalor is minus two as well, but I am eventually going to build a building that, uh, gets rid of that. Plus the building that gives me squalor was, uh, this port. So yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a good idea to convert it at all. Uh, this guy leveled up. He is my heir. So right now he's going to be a governor and we're gonna go i guess what route is like good well well actually gonna need to do that tax rate plus three percent always good so yeah that was uh that was a mistake but still we recruited some troops um we might start losing money although for now we're not which is definitely good let's go back to the settlement and actually replenish well, we are not going to be replenishing because that's not built yet. But um, we can upgrade this. It's going to give us public order and it's uh, going to give us priests and all stuff, uh, all things like that. So that's going to be cool. Going to end another turn here. I guess I can recruit a few more troops as I'm not losing money quite yet. Yeah, attrition. I know. But now it should be okay. We have 20 food and... Uh, yeah, so we finally recovered from that. That was a big mistake. I'm not sure why I did that. We cannot recruit swordsmen at this point. Uh, but we can get axes. And uh, they don't do as much damage. They don't have as much melee attack. Pretty much uh, worse units overall. But that's all that we can get at this point. I'm going to go for some more uh, levy spearmen. And I guess that's going to be it. All right, in four turns, I am also going to have uh, 
No, I'm, I'm actually gonna have them right now. I guess it unlocked it. Yeah, I guess uh, when I build this building and just unlock the, the priest. So I'm just gonna need some money for that. But I'm not gonna have money at this point. Yeah, I'd rather not get a priest, but just finish building this. Because I can just stop building it and then I'm gonna have enough money for a priest. But no, I'm just gonna keep doing that. So, uh, I just want this army to replenish. And once we do that, we're gonna go and try to conquer the provincial capital. Attitude, plus 60 with the kingdom of Munster. Why? Huh, that's weird. They still dislike us, but yeah, I don't, I don't really care. Uh, yeah, I don't really care. I'm just gonna go and conquer them. Uh, I don't care if they like me or not. I'm gonna conquer pretty much the whole of Ireland. So I'm gonna go here. My guys are gonna replenish a little bit slower, but still, it's it's fine. Uh, Polo Quarter is gonna be going down. Uh, it's not gonna be fixed by this building either, but. I guess uh, once we actually convert people, uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be okay. Cool. Send the turn. And yeah, for for now, that's all that I can really do. Uh, just go here and try to conquer the provincial capital. So let's see if they have any units in there. They do not. So next turn we are gonna be able to siege it. They probably do have some units over there, but I guess we can go and check that out as well. And yeah, let's end another turn. Uh, we cannot trade with uh, the Dane Law, which is the only faction that likes us right now. We finished this as well. Cannot upgrade it. Can't upgrade that. Can upgrade that, which is going to give me more food and uh, some growth as well, but no money for that. Oh, we are suffering. Yeah, so the differences between us and the other Norse factions is that we suffer uh, winter attrition, which is pretty nasty. We're still at the very north of the map, so we're going to be having a lot of that. But yeah, let's declare a war here. And we are going to suffer some winter attrition, but apparently we just got to build something and they have basically no garrison at all so i'm just going to be auto resolving that next turn unless they come up with an army and uh attack us but i doubt that's going to be happening so it's okay the battle is like not not really worth fighting yeah there's the army or is that an army i can really see no it's just a priest apparently all right then well we're going to be able to just auto-resolve that. And we'll take the provincial capital. Okay, that's that's very good. It's a good start. Uh, we're going to occupy it. And we're going to have to repair all of this and then convert it. But, um, yeah, that's a, so that's a good start. Um... Once we actually replenish our troops, uh, we're going to go and siege the settlement so we can take full control of this province. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's going to be it for this episode, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.